hi, welcome to the last couple weeks worth of stupid news. I've been trying to take the week worth of stupid news and put it in a long form stupid news YouTube video, but as you can see, or you're getting ready to see, I've fallen behind. So before we get to the stupid news, I have to ask you guys a question. I'm thinking about, because I also do good news, I'm thinking about every single day I put all the good news and all the stupid news into one YouTube video and then make a daily upload. Would you guys be interested in that over what I'm currently doing? The videos would be shorter, but let me know your thoughts in the comment. Meanwhile, let's get to the stupid news of the week. Stupid oh yeah oh f and no nine kids in nebraska well they're in some hot crap they were given criminal mischief citations because they kept running into fences in their neighborhoods apparently it's a trend inspired by the kool-aid man the freaking kool-aid man the only thing that sugared up glass pitchers ever inspired is diabetes and nightmares doorbell cameras have captured images of the kids throwing themselves through people's property just as the kool-aid man does <laughs> this is a story i never thought that i would get to tell i'm glad to tell of it uh, the the result of all this is several thousand dollars of damages at multiple properties. Who's gonna pay for this? Not this guy. He's one tip over from losing his guts on the sidewalk. Listen, I'm just gonna come out and say it. We need children to calm down with what they see on the boob tube. Just because you see it doesn't mean you should do it. I mean, I watched Sky Dancers as a kid and you don't see me spinning off a bridge to see if I can fly yet. Stupid news. A UK court has said that talking about a man's bald head is sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. Yes, that makes sense for today's society. They say it's the equivalent of talking about a woman's booby size. Mm -hmm. Yes, that makes sense for today's society. This all came about because a man went to the courts and said, yo, my employer is making offhanded comments about my bald head and I don't like it. Which, to be fair, fair. However, the court said it's sexual harassment because it impacts more men than it does women. I just think like, you know when you go into a restaurant and maybe there's a bald man, but next to the bald man is a mom and she's got her titty out breastfeeding her baby. Who gets the dirty eyes? The bald man or the woman who's feeding her child? All I'm saying is no man's had to go into the bathroom at Applebee's because he took his cap off, but I know plenty of women who had to breastfeed their baby on the toilet because society has sexualized boobies. So maybe that UK court needs to just call now, I don't know if this is a stupid news story or if it's arguable this could easily happen. We're at an art museum in Paris where on display is a blue jacket hanging on a nail. Jacket has a pocket. Inside the pocket are postcards of Picasso paintings. It's interactive so people are allowed to take out the postcards and look at them. Well, a 72 year old woman visiting the art museum apparently did not get the memo. She took the jacket off the wall, walked out of that museum, took it home and tailored it to fit her body. Nice. Security cameras capture the act, but nobody knows who the woman is so they can't track her down. I was at the Museum of Modern Art a few weeks ago and this bed was considered art. Watch as I wrap my hair. I am mystified that three floors above me is literally the original Starry Night painting. This made up bed was literally on display at the exact same art museum that is home to Starry Night. Now I get that art is abstract but as an art consumer Anyways, the woman comes back a few days later. What is she wearing? Said blue jacket. She gets arrested, but gets away with a warning. I just want to say this. Though this might be a case of ignorance, tell me when in human history have we ever walked into an art museum, thought that's not supposed to be hanging on the wall. I'm going to take it with me and tailor it to my body. And then not to only do that, but then to return to the scene of the crime with said Taylor art piece. Stupid news. The headline reads, man dies of a heart attack after trying to bury his girlfriend's body after he murdered her. Good riddance to this man. So we're in South Carolina for this story. A man is dead. The sheriff says he collapsed after having a heart attack while he was digging a pit to bury his girlfriend in. What the fuck? Joseph McKinnon, AKA the dead killer. Allegedly, supposedly, I don't know at this point if he can be convicted in a court of law because you know, he's dead. Joe told his neighbors that the pit was actually for a water feature that was going to enhance his garden. Turns out, that was a lie. But then one day, another set of neighbors saw Joe laying face down. He wasn't moving. When law enforcement shows up, they look over Joe's body and he's got no trauma to it. Uh, duh, because he had a heart attack. The trauma's on the inside. It's a heart problem, which he had prior to this heart attack, apparently. They couldn't find Joe's significant other to deliver the news that he had had a visit with the Grim Reaper. And uh, honestly, they found this suspicious. They go looking for his girlfriend who lived with Joe. Her name's Patricia Dent. They find blood in the house and uh, surprise, surprise, that's a red flag to him. 
They then go back to the pit and that's where they find Patricia. I'll save you the details on the condition they found her body in. And to Joe, may the flames of hell be a little extra hot for you. Stupid news. Okay, I know the home buying situation is not great. In fact, it's bad. Just bad. I blame it on Wall Street. They keep coming in and scooping up all these homes that would otherwise go to first time home buyers. But that's a story for another day because today, we are in Cleveland, Ohio. A home is for sale there, and for $162,000, you can land, potentially, depending on how many people are bidding on it, this three bedroom, three bathroom house. But also, there are giant dinosaur statues in the front yard, so that could scare your children at night. Or you, I don't know your life. Listen, in this market, you take what you can get, and what you'll get is granite countertops, oak trim, this dinosaur, a fireplace with a wooden crown mantle, marble in the full bathroom, and this dinosaur. There's even a third floor which you could turn into a man cave, which will be perfect for viewing this other dinosaur. Listen, pro tip, don't walk, run, sprint to put your offer. Stupid news. Listen, I've heard of writing your name in your underwear, but on your dentures? I've said it before, I'll say it again. Sometimes I think this segment should not be called stupid news. This is one of those stories that I think should not be called stupid news. In this case, I would like to call it, you lost what in the ocean? News. So there's this couple, they're from Mississippi. They're on vacation in Gulf Shores, Alabama, and they decide to go snorkeling. A totally fine ocean vacation activity. The husband's on a mission while he snorkels. He's trying to find seashells for his wife. The big ones. That's very sweet of him. So 20 to 30 yards offshore, he pops his head up out of the water. What's he got in his hands? A gosh darn pair of dentures. <laughs> the husband describes the dentures as pearly white, clean, no poly grip on them. He said they look brand new. What is this accent I have? I apologize. I think it's because I'm from the Midwest and sometimes it just slips out. Back to the story. The husband thinks it'll be funny to surprise his wife. He says, honey, close your eyes. She thinks she's about to get a big shell in her hand. Nope, he plops down those dentures. The dentures apparently are worth about two grand and they're engraved. Randy Williams has his name on the side of those dentures. Randy. The husband wants to find his boy Randy, so he puts a post up on Facebook. Turns out Randy is from Wisconsin and a week ago he'd been down there on vacation himself and he lost his chompers. The couple dropped the dentures in the mail, but not before taking the teeth on an adventure. The wife says they took him to Krispy Kreme to Chick-fil-A. They even took him sunbathing at the pool. So yeah, that's the you lost what at the beach news. Stupid news. A high school biology class held a funeral for the classroom skeleton because hold on, it was real. This is a WTF story, as in WTF did this high school biology class have real bones hanging up in their classroom. This was at a high school in Germany. The bones belonged to that of an unknown woman. The students gave her a proper funeral service with a funeral officiant a coffin that had the symbols of almost every major religion on it. And around 80 people came to the ceremony. Apparently, back in the day, classrooms had a lot of these real skeletons and this was one of them. She'd been used in the classroom since the early 1950s. Students, they'd had a problem with this for a while and they'd been wanting to give her a funeral for a bit, but the pandemic was like, nah. Keep her in the classroom. Now you should know that before the funeral, the school was able to get DNA from the bones so they might soon find out who the woman is. I'm just gonna come out and say it, kids. Your school, it's now haunted. Hope you were nice to that classroom skeleton because that's gonna determine the rest of your school year. Stupid news. South Carolina has been suspiciously making a lot of stupid news segments lately. Are y'all okay out there? So there's this couple in Hartsville and they go to a motel. They are accidentally given the keys to the wrong room. Instead of being like, Yo, uh, front desk person, these are the keys to the wrong room. They had a different ideal, a brilliant idea. It was not brilliant. Turns out the room that they got the keys for belonged to that of construction workers and what's inside? Tools. So this couple, they back their truck up to this room and they load it up with the tools. And do they hide the truck? No, it just sits there with all of the construction workers' tools for everybody to see. So the construction workers, they return from the job site and they see all of their tools are in the back of these yahoo's truck so what do they do they steal their tools back i mean is it really stealing if you're stealing your own stuff back i don't think so well the couple they see these construction workers stealing these tools that they obviously stole fair and square and they were like hey that's our stolen stuff you want to fight which seems like another smart move it was not a smart the guy apparently had a knife, the woman might have had a stun gun. The construction workers, they have no weapons. Unless you count these guns, no one does. But they are construction workers, so what do they have access to? 
tools. One of the construction workers grabs a level and beats them with it. No word yet on who's facing charges or what those charges are, so. Stupid news. It feels like it's been a hot minute since I said Florida man, so here we go. So there's this couple named Jose and Catherine Rodriguez, and they travel the country for their vlog documenting their life. The vlog is called Southern Life, if you wanna check them out. They're on I-75 in Florida. Their dash cam captures the most Florida of all Florida things, a man golfing on the side of the interstate. The couple says that the man was pulled over to the side of the road. He's wearing a black polo. A classic golf look. He's taking practice swings right there in the grass, just smacking balls next to the interstate. <laughs> Listen, people, it's 2022. I say if Jeffy B, that's Jeff Bezos, can fly a wienermobile to the cusp of outer space while wearing an ill-fitted off-white colored cowboy hat, then this man can play golf on the side of I-75 in Florida. Stupid news. A woman in Florida goes to McDonald's to pick up an order she placed online. She ordered a Happy Meal, a tea, a fries, a chocolate shake, and a filet fish sandwich. I think her first mistake was ordering a fish sandwich from McDonald's online. I don't know why, but to me, a fish sandwich from McDonald's just don't sound right. I'm sure some of you have already headed to the comment section to express your disdain for the fact that I said I think fish sandwiches from McDonald's sound icky. You love fish sandwiches from McDonald's and how dare anyone have a different thought than you ever! And if you are that viewer, dear viewer, you should know you have the same vibes as that woman that I just mentioned. Here's why. The woman picks up the order, surprise, it's wrong. And she's not just mad about it, she's super McMad about it. She starts yelling at employees before she calls 911. That 911 phone call goes on for 10 minutes. Her sister tries to calm her down. That doesn't work. McDonald's offers her a refund. That doesn't work either. She gets behind the counter and starts throwing cups after she assaults the condiment counter. She eventually leaves, but not before twerking on her way out, which makes sense given everything else that just previously happened. Now, not only does she not have her refund, she's facing charges. Stupid news. Um, have you ever? I don't know, here we go. Buckle up for this stupid news story. Actually, do you buckle up if you're in a buggy being pulled by a horse? Legit question. To Ohio, where a 21-year-old man now has an OVI, operating a vehicle impaired. But the vehicle is not a vehicle in the traditional sense. Instead, it's a horse and buggy. I don't know exactly how you get caught drinking and driving when it comes to a horse and buggy. Like, was the horse swerving back and forth over the middle line? Like, how does that work? Apparently, the sheriff's office got a call about a reckless driver on the wrong side of the road. He was that daggum horse. Deputies find the buggy, they get in front of it, eventually they get it to come to a stop. The driver, you should know, not driving, instead was passed out. The horse and buggy was driving themselves. Sounds like a Tesla. Anyways, OVI. Stupid news. I just want to say this. I'm impressed with the falling man's aiming skills, but I'm overall very concerned as to why he did this. Like, why did he do this? A 38-year-old Arkansas man is now looking at felony charges because allegedly, supposedly, he's not been found guilty in a court of law. He shot the town's water tower. Hold on. You should know that Kingsland, Arkansas is the birthplace to Johnny Cash, and on the side of the water tower is a mural of Johnny Cash. So when this yahoo shoots into the water tower, what part do you think he goes for? If you guessed the pee part of Johnny Cash, you'd be right. It looks like Johnny Cash is taking a leak on the town. If convicted, Timothy Sled could be behind bars for up to 16 years. You should know that any cost to this little town is a great cost. Right now they're losing about 30,000 gallons of water a day because of this incident. That's about $200 in water. And it's gonna cost about $5,000 to fix, which again is a big expense for this small town. However, the town says the water is safe to drink. <laughs> Stupid news. And that's it. That's the stupid news. As you know, I put these stupid news videos out on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. If you want to follow me on those platforms too, I wouldn't be mad about it. Thank you and have a great day. If you want, you don't have to have a great day. It's a free country. Do as you want.